I'm very honored to welcome our CEO and co-founder, Brian Chesky. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, everyone. How is everyone doing today? You guys doing good? It's pretty crazy to be here in front of so many hosts. I actually remember the first time Joe and I had a meetup here in Paris. Um, we had about 30 hosts here, and it was almost all of our hosts. We could fit in a small back room of a bar. So it's pretty amazing to be here today, and I wanted to thank everyone for coming. Thank you so much. You know, being a host, I think a lot of times we're misunderstood. Not only are we sometimes misunderstood, I think sometimes beyond misunderstood, sometimes we are even attacked. A lot of people say, I don't want to have strangers in my building. I don't want to have Airbnb in my neighborhood. And when people say that, I think what they're saying is that they don't understand what we do as a host. One of our core values at Airbnb it may very well be the most important core value at Airbnb, is to be a host. And what I want to talk about today is what it means to be a host at Airbnb. You know, when people see host on Airbnb and they don't understand us, I think a lot of times the reason why is they're looking at us and they see spaces and they see houses. I don't blame them. I mean, you come to Airbnb.com, you come to the app, and when you see our homes, you see spaces, and what they miss is it's not about our spaces. It's actually about you. It's about me. It's about the host themselves. What Airbnb is about, it's not just about a house. It's about a home. And there's a difference between a house and a home. You see, a house is a space, but a home is a place where you accept people as if they're family. Being a host is about caring for somebody else. Being a host means that you make someone else feel like they belong. And I hope that people, when they see Airbnb, they understand that single point that it's not about a space, but it's about a host, and a host makes you feel like you belong. Now, this is something that we realized in the really, really early days. That very first weekend, October 2007, Joe and I were decided to rent our apartment. We couldn't make rent. So we created the air bed and breakfast. Now here's the funny thing. Our tagline at the time was air bed and breakfast, a cheap, affordable alternative to a hotel. That was the tagline. Because why else would you stay with two guys and a few air beds unless you were so broke and so desperate that you could never afford to stay in a hotel. I mean, that was kind of where our heads were at. So we ended up building this website, and we had three people stay with us. We had Catherine. Catherine was a 35-year-old woman from Boston. We had Michael. Michael was a 45-year-old father of five from Utah who slept in an air bed in our kitchen. And then we had a mole, and a mole who was actually originally from India. You know, we did all the typical hospitality things. We picked them up at the airport. We bought them OJ. I got Pop-Tarts. <laughs> and we gave them a map to the city. But something much deeper happened than that. You see, we spent a week with them. And when you spend a week with somebody, well, let me put it to you this way. Imagine you were to meet somebody out on the street, and then you get to know them. How long will it take before you get to know them well enough that you're friends, and then you invite them over to your house for dinner? It might take like a year. It could take longer. And what hosting does is it takes that year-long friendship, and it compresses it into a matter of just a few days. And so what ended up happening for us was that Michael, Catherine, and Mole they actually came to our house as strangers. 
but they left as friends. And I think that we've all had this moment switch on in our heads, in our hearts. And this is the kind of interesting thing that happened. So a couple weeks after Catherine Michael and Lamont left, Joe and I get an email. It's from Catherine. Now, Catherine's originally from Boston. And Catherine emails us and says, guess what, guys? I had such a good time visiting San Francisco. I'm moving there. Well, it gets better. Because not long after that, we got an actual letter in the mail. And this wasn't a little letter. This was a big envelope. And we opened this large envelope. And it was a wedding invitation to a mole's wedding. And I wondered how many hotels would have gotten that wedding invitation. <laughs> and I think for us, that was the moment that, you know, this light switch turns on for you. And you start to realize this is about something so much more. You know, I've been able to travel the world and go to dozens of cities on Airbnb. Here's the really cool thing. When you travel on Airbnb, you experience a city through its people, through its host. You don't experience a city through its monuments. You don't experience a city through its landmarks. Those aren't culture. You know what culture is? It's people, people that are alive in their homes. And that's what we do. So this is an idea that's been around for a long time. We didn't invent the idea of hosting. In fact, I think the idea of hosting has been around as long as it's been people. It would have happened thousands of years ago around a warm fire with some strangers and some friendly faces. And the modern idea of hosting has been around before Airbnb. But what didn't happen before us was I don't think we all knew that every one of us was out there. We couldn't see each other. And so when the platform came online, we connected together. And not only has this been around for a long time, I think hosting will be around forever. Hosting is not going anywhere. You know, in Silicon Valley, like where we come from in San Francisco, there's a lot of talk about technology companies disrupting the way people work and the way people live. But I'm going to tell you one thing right now. Technology is never going to disrupt hosting. Tom Friedman is an author, and he says there's three types of jobs. Jobs with a hand, jobs with the head, and jobs with the heart. Now, technology first typically disrupts jobs with the hand. For example, 100 years ago, almost everyone was a farmer. Today, there's not a lot of farmers. Machines have automated a lot of farming. Technology then eventually disrupts jobs with the head. But what technology can never do, technology can never disrupt jobs with the heart. And hospitality is service with heart. You see. Machines cannot create belonging. Only people can do that. Only host can do that. So while robots are disrupting people all over the world, actually it turns out that you are disrupting robots in all the mass-produced hospitality around the world that would otherwise permeate. We are a community that knows no boundaries of culture or country. I know we have hosts today from Spain, right? We have hosts today from Brazil. We have hosts today from Japan. I know we have a lot of hosts today from here in France, right? But we also have a lot of hosts today from far-reaching places in the world. We have a host today, as we saw, from Greenland. We have hosts today from Uzbekistan. We have hosts today from Kazakhstan. We have hosts from Sri Lanka. We even, today, have hosts from Cuba. This past January, President Barack Obama lifted the travel restrictions for the United States travelers to be able to go to Cuba. And that really enabled us to be able to allow Cuban hosts in Airbnb. 
Now, Cubans have been hosting a lot longer than Airbnb's been around. This has been going on for a generation. And today, we have 2,500 homes in Cuba on Airbnb. Thank you guys so much. We are a community that knows no boundaries of culture or country. But not only that, I think we're also a community that knows no boundaries of generation. You know, in a lot of technology platforms, kids and young people are the first people to adopt a technology. And they start using it. And it gets really, really popular. And then eventually their parents start using it. And then the moment their parents start using it, the kids run away. They go somewhere else. It's no longer cool. Our community is different. On our community, the kids, the parents, and even the grandparents all use it and all live together. And it's cool to do that. Now, now why is this? Why is this community different? I think to understand the community is to understand the power of belonging anywhere. You see, when you belong, you don't exclude other people. Belonging means a culture of inclusion. And that's what this really means to us. You know, hosting's changed so many lives. And it's even had an impact on my life. It really taught me for the first time how to care for a stranger. And I think when you learn to care for a stranger, you become a kinder and more generous person. And growing up in our house, my sister and my parents, we never had strangers in our home. It was kind of a crazy idea, but I'm so glad that we discovered it. So today, many people don't actually understand us. But that's going to change. Because they are gonna see not just our house, but who we are in our hearts. And part of that, is I want to make sure that one of the gifts that we can give to you is to make sure that people actually do understand who you are and what you stand for as a host. That's one of the greatest gifts that we could give to you. And to be able to do that, one of the most important groups that should understand you are the cities that you live in. How can you succeed as a host if you don't even feel like you belong in your own city? And so it's very important for us that we communicate to cities who we are and what we stand for. And what we stand for in cities is just a very, very basic idea. And that is that we exist to enrich and strengthen the cities and the neighborhoods that we serve. As part of this, there's really three commitments that we are making to the cities that we are in and that we serve. The first commitment is something we've been doing for a while, but we want to make it clear to cities that we will always collect or remit hotel tax, and we're going to continue to doing that going forward, and we want cities to know that that is an ongoing commitment at Airbnb. The second commitment is about sharing our information. You know, the less cities know about us, well, there's a saying, the absence of information is sometimes filled with the worst of assumptions. And so we want to make sure, not that cities get the private information of host, but they understand the type of hosting activity that happens in their city. And I really think that when cities actually see the kind of hosting that's happening in their city, they're going to learn a couple things. They're going to learn that there's people that would not have been able to afford to go to their city, that are now going to their city, they're staying longer, they're staying in the local neighborhoods, and they're spending their money on the local businesses. And this is great for cities, and it's great for neighborhoods, and we just need to make sure that we get out the word about what we're actually doing in cities. And our final commitment is about affordable housing. This is something that's been in the news a lot lately. You know, affordable housing is in the roots of our company. In the sense that Joe and I had a house that we couldn't afford. So we started air bed and breakfast. We don't want to be part of the problem. We think we are and will continue to be part of the solution. And we're going to partner with cities and we're going to partner with you to make sure that we are part of the solution. With these three commitments, 
It's my true belief that we are going to strengthen and empower and enrich the cities that we serve. And by doing all of that, while today some may not understand us or think that what we do is limited to the space that we provide, I'm quite sure that tomorrow people are going to understand that our mission isn't your house, it's you, the host. It's us, and it's what we provide. You know, one day a child may ask their parents what it means to be home. And today that home is where the family lives. But tomorrow, that home is limited just to where you belong. And where you belong will be anywhere. And maybe that will remind us of a principle that you've all taught me. It's a very, very simple idea. It's a good reminder that hosts teach us. And that is that people are, in the end, fundamentally good. So thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you.